Okay, so labeling yourself a low budget indie filmmaker for whoever who's sort of taking on that title, how can filmmakers hurt themselves with trying to stay so frugal? How do they end up sabotaging themselves? Yeah. I know they have a, a limited budget. It's not that they're trying to stay in that realm, but it's just how things yeah. are dictated at the moment with their financial circumstances, with the investors, crowdfunding, whatever, credit cards. But how does that somehow sabotage yeah. their production? I, well, I personally don't like to label myself like that. Um, I, I know some people who do. I think that's, that, that's such a weird thing to label yourself if that's what you're gonna choose to do. I'm a low budget filmmaker. That's just like, why not choose, I'm the guy that makes people ask questions about food or well, I don't, or you know what I mean? Like, I feel like that would be a healthier way to frame it as opposed to low budget. That's a, that's a strange way to like, cause it all, it's, it's sort of a downer on your work anyway. It's a, it's a <laughs> right. down uh -huh. place to start. Yeah. <clears throat> so I think the trap that a lot of people fall into when they start to label it like low budget X, they start to, um, I made a motto of myself that years ago, I didn't, I never wanted to work on a film that was just a, I used to call them the just a films. Oh, this is just a slasher. You know, it's just, it, what that's doing is, is you're automatically lowering your expectations. Look, this is just a corporate video. Let's not break right. ourselves. Well, can't we do better? You know, I think that's the mistake when there's no budget. Look, there's no budget. We can't break ourselves to do this it's just a simple little drama about two people falling in love like man why then why even make it if you're gonna do that then why even you know give the script to someone else who's not gonna call it that and let them run with it um other mistakes i think is lack of planning the lower your budget the more planning you need to do i think it's inversely proportional like you can't throw money at your problems um, you better think about every frame and every, you have to be so hyper efficient about the way you're shooting scenes, the way you're constructing, the way you're working with your actors. You can't afford for lack of communication when the budgets get low. And I don't want to hear the excuse that you can't make good art for cheap. That's BS. Yes, you can. I mean, have you seen like, I don't know, I really liked El Mariachi. It was, it was a great entertaining film for 6,000 bucks. Like Chris Nolan made following for, yes. I don't know what his budget was, but it was very around that budget. It's amazing. I was so frustrated when I first saw it too, because my first film was 12,000. And my first film had like mob scenes and car chases and two underwater sequences in it, like a really complex thing. And his is like, about a writer who follows a guy. <laughs> <laughs> and his three characters shot in it. Oh man. Christopher Nolan, you're so bright. I know. Give me a chance. <laughs> but like automatically assuming that your project won't be good because of money is a huge mistake and not the place you want to start. That's oftentimes where you can make your best work. Where like the, we talked about Jaws earlier, the shark didn't work. So he had to think of a way to, to tell a story without a shark, a, a movie about a shark to tell a story without a shark. That's the most memorable part of that whole movie is the fact that you never see it. So looking at your project like that and not using money as your hindrance, maybe it's your opportunity to, t to do something that no one has seen. Uh, that goes back to that looking at the problem with a, with a joyful excitement as opposed to like, ugh, roll your <laughs> eyes because we don't have the budget to solve our problems kind of thing. Um, I think that that happens all the time, all the time. People just get frustrated that their budgets aren't bigger. Well, here's the thing, budgets are never gonna be big enough. I don't care how big your budget is, it's never gonna be enough. Um, even if you're doing these big budget commercials, you're always gonna run into the end of the budget at some point. It, it's just going to stop, it's going to have a cap, like, and you're always gonna wish you had more. That never changes. And the better you get at functioning on that level, Oh man, the better that's gonna carry you when you're functioning on a larger level. I feel like sometimes though people bandy around that term low budget the same way maybe someone says, well, we're a nonprofit. Mm -hmm. So oh, we can't, yeah, you know what I'm saying? So it's like this badge of like, 
we'd like this, but we can't pay for it kind of thing, but can you still give it to us? And that's the tough part because yeah. a lot of this is done with borrowed time or favors yeah. or borrowed locations, but that people then label themselves as yeah. such. And it's also a way that just as a nonprofit would say, well, we, sorry, we wouldn't be able to afford this. Can you donate this to us because we're a yeah. nonprofit? Yeah, and I think it'd be much better to be, instead of labeling yourself as low budget, labeling yourself as the guy that when people watch your film, they go, you had how much? Oh my God, like, that's what you want. You know, um, but that comes from, again, planning, really being creative, making it clever, you know, all that stuff. You can do it, it's, it happens all the time. It happens all the time with people making something for nothing. That's the fun, and that's where it's fun. So the first camera you got your hands on was at this cable access? Yeah. In, in Oregon? Yeah. You got, okay, what kind of camera was it? Like I, a beta cam or something? Uh, probably, I think it was pre-beta. I think it was an S, a SVHS maybe like old school with a big, it wasn't just a camera, it was one with a, a oh deck attached to it. And I, you know, I'm trying to shoot, I think I did a little slasher film in, in I was in high school, but yeah, like, oh man, it, uh, my mom hated it. Cause she's, my mom's very religious. So like I'm making the slasher film with this, ah. Oh. But anyway, that was, takes me back. I'm very thankful to those people. You know, because and I, if this is an opportunity that they still do, I don't know why they wouldn't. I would highly suggest if anyone's having a problem getting access to cameras, that's a good place to go, because that's that's where you have to you have to keep practicing. Yeah. And uh, I look back on that very fond memories. Like, yeah, the first time I was able to finally play, man. Do you remember when you walked into that studio? Like, how, oh, when yeah. you're 16, you just go into this studio and yes, absolutely, and just like. Again, I felt like my feet were leaving the ground, like just of like, wow, this is, cause you, it's like, it's like you want to build a house and someone just pulls up in front of, with a truck full of tools. It's like the possibilities here to create that magic is, that's how I felt. That's, I still feel that way going into a camera house, going into a grip house, you're just looking at the lights and stuff and imagining what you can make. Like that feeling has never left. Um, that's why I keep doing it. Like it's, it's the possibility. Yeah.